Hello, future doctors. This is another segment of PowerPoint presentation with regards to management principles and theories. So, the principles involved in this topic are the rules, principles, and concepts with regards on how to manage people. Introduction to management. So, let's begin. Management theories with regards to managing people, staff, okay, the community, the members of the team, and so on and so forth. Introduction. Management theories are concepts surrounding recommended management strategies, which may include tools such as frameworks and guidelines that can be implemented in modern organizations. Generally, professionals will not rely solely on one management theory alone, but instead introduce several concepts from different management theories that best suit their workforce and company. Okay? So there is no single approach to management. Um, it consists of many factors and consideration. We study management theories to increase productivity, simplify decision making, encourage staff participation, and so on and so forth. In this discussion, we are going to talk about the three types of theories. The first is the very early days of management writers tried to identify and describe the functions of management. The second type tells you how to do it. The third type of theory taken from the operational management. Management also says that if you try to copy someone else's approach, you will fail and anyone who holds a management role has to combine the roles of administrator, manager, and leader if they are to do their job effectively. Okay, So it is a combination of roles that determines your effectivity and efficiency as a manager. The first theory in our discussion. The theory of Henry Fayol. Fayol's 14 Principles of Management. Okay, uh, this is the picture of Henry Fayol at the right side of the slide. Who is Henry Fayol? A French industrialist is now recognized as the father of modern management. In year 1916, Fayol wrote a book entitled Industrial and General Administration. In this book, he gave the 14 principles of management. These 14 principles of management are universally accepted and used even today. According to Henry Fayol, all managers must follow these 14 principles. So, the 14 principles of Henry Fayol are the following. First, division of work. Work should be divided among the individuals and groups to ensure that effort and attention are focused on special portions of the task. Fayol presented work specialization as the best way to use the human resources of the organization. Second is authority. The concepts of authority and responsibility are, clo are closely related. Authority was defined by Fayol as the right to give orders and the power to exact obedience. 
Responsibility involves being accountable and is therefore naturally associated with authority. Whoever assumes authority also assumes responsibility. Okay? So by authority, it means the person has the power to influence another. Okay? However, with great power comes great responsibility. Next principle is discipline. A successful organization requires the common effort of workers. Penalties should be applied judiciously to encourage this common effort. Next is unity to command. Workers should receive orders from only one manager. Another principle is unity of direction. The entire organization should be moving towards a common objective in a common direction. Next is subordination of individual interest to the general interest. The interest of one person should not take priority over the interest of the organization as a whole. Next principle is remuneration. Many variables such as cost of living, supply of qualified personnel, general business conditions, and success of the business should be considered in determining a worker's rate of pay. Okay? By remuneration, it contemplates compensation. Next principle is centralization. Fayol defines centralization as lowering the importance of the subordinate role. Decentralization is increasing the importance. The degree to which centralization or decentralization should be adopted depends on the specific organization in which the manager is working. Next is scalar chain. Managers in the hierarchies are part of a chain like authority scale. Each manager from the first line supervisor to the president possess certain amount of authority. The president possess the most authority, the first line supervisor the least. Lower level managers should always keep upper level managers informed of their work activities. The existence of a scalar chain and adherence is necessary if the organization is to be successful, okay? So, scalar chain is a matter of communication between higher management and middle management. Scalar chain must not be broken in norm circumstances. However, if quick action is necessary, then this chain can be broken. This is done using gang plank. A temporary arrangement between two different points to facilitate quick and easy communication. Example, if F has to communicate with P, he will first send the communication upwards with the help of E, D, C, B to A, and then downwards using L, M, N, and O to G, okay, as you can see in the diagram. So, this is the gangplank diagram, which take quite some time, and by the time, it may not be worthy. Therefore, a gangplank has been developed between the two. Next principle is order. For the sake of efficiency and coordination, all materials and people related to a specific kind of work should be treated as equally as possible. Next principle is equity. All employees should be treated as equally as possible. Another principle under Henry Fayol's book is the stability of tenure of personnel. Retaining productive employees should always be a high priority of management. Recruitment and selection costs as well as increased Product reject rates 
are usually associated with hiring new workers. Next principle is initiative. Management should take steps to encourage worker initiative, which is defined as new or additional work undertaken through self-direction. Last principle is esprit de corps or team spirit. Management should encourage harmony and general good feelings among the employees. Okay? So, employees and managers should work harmoniously in the spirit okay, of teamwork. So, what is the conclusion based on these principles? As we all know that a building cannot attain stability without proper foundation. An organization also cannot be stable in its long run and achieve its long-term goals without following these 14 principles of management. Organization and these principles are like com complementary goods which completes each other. One is useless without the other, like car and petrol, okay? So, these 14 principles of management complement each other, okay? They supplement each other. They are in a balance if all of these principles are present within the organization. Now, let's go to another theory of management. Taylor and scientific management. Who is Frederick Taylor? He is a director at Bethlehem Steel, the largest steel maker in the United States. What are his interests? Social aspects of managing people. How does Taylor's theory works? It is used when staff resources are tight and when there is a need to increase productivity. Under Taylor's theory, the job of a manager was to plan and control work and that there was a single most efficient way to do any job. Use time and motion techniques to break down each work process into its constituent parts and eliminate unnecessary action. Okay, so Taylor's theory utilizes the technique called time and motion. Okay, sometimes time and motion is documentary. Okay, there is a output which is reviewed by management. Taylor's theory. His work laid the foundation for the division of labor and mass production, which Henry Ford applied so successfully in car manufacturing. The people who show potential should be selected, trained properly, and provided with additional opportunities to ensure maximum efficiency. Now, it begs the question, how do you use Taylor's theory? These are the steps to ensure the efficiency of the staffs or workers. Review on the job assigned for the team. Reallocate and re reorganize the work to improve efficiency. And then, evaluate the effective changes. Next, review regularly, at least annually, the work that staff do and look for efficiency gains. And then, improve the training to get great productivity. And lastly, last but not the least, when undertaking the review of work, canvas ideas from the wider team on how the task could be done more efficiently. Now, let me read to you a quote from Frederick Winslow Taylor. Hardly a competent workman can be found 
who does not devote a considerable amount of time to studying just how slowly he can work and still convince his employer that he is going at a good pace. Let's go to another theory of management, Theory 3. The Elton Mayo and Uthorn Experiment. Okay, this is another theory about management. What the Uthorn researchers found? There is no connection between productivity and working conditions. And then, most important motivational factor is belonging to a group. Okay? So, if there is sense of belongingness, the staff, the member of the team, okay, the employee can work effectively and efficiently. And then, Productivity increases when talking to the workers or staff. So, constant communication improves productivity between management and rank and file employees. How to use this principle? Recognize and work on the list given above. Encourage good-natured competition between mini groups, okay, or subgroups. Treat everyone with respect and with the belief that they are intelligent and capable of doing their work well. Again, let me read to you a quote from Elton Mayo. Management in any continuously successful plant is not related to single workers, but always to working groups. In every department that continues to operate, the workers, have, whether aware of it or not, formed themselves into a group with appropriate customs, duties, routines, and even rituals. And management succeeds or fails in proportion as it is accepted without reservation by the group as authority and leader. Now, let's move on to another theory of management, theory number four. Drucker on the functions of management, and this theory is crowned as king, okay? This is founded by Drucker. Who is Peter Drucker? Peter Drucker was the first true genius that the study of management produced. He helped establish the discipline of management and foresaw numerous trends in management many years in advance of anyone else. It was Drucker who suggested that the purpose of every business organization was to create and maintain a customer. Okay, So according to the principle Okay, of Drucker, um, an organization exists due to its customer. So, this principle is a customer-based principle. Peter Drucker didn't talk about maximizing profits. He knew that only by building and maintaining customers can a business hope to make a profit because its customers that creates profits, okay? So, uh, the theory of Drucker contemplates that customers are the lifeblood of an organization or a company. Drucker argued that managers were responsible for first, setting the organization's or team's objectives, then, providing and organizing the resources required to achieve the objectives. Next, motivating staff to achieve the objectives. Another is monitoring staff performance against the objectives. And then, improving performance by continually developing themselves and their staff. How to use Drucker's theory? First, identify who your customers are.
because according to Drucker, a company must be a customer-based company in order for it to be successful. And then, ask yourself, who buys my goods or services? Once you have identified your customers, then ask, am I meeting their needs? What can I do to enhance the service or product I provide? Based upon your answers, develop a plan to provide customers with the best possible service. And then, provide targets and objectives for all staff. Set 80% of the targets at a level that is relatively easy for staff to achieve. This will turn people on to success and motivate them to meet the more challenging targets. Next, monitor performance. Constantly monitor the physical and staffing resources that you need to achieve your targets and take action to remedy any shortfalls before they become a problem. Another approach to Drucker's theory is to motivate and communicate with your staff by sharing information and listening to what they have to say, okay? You should keep an open communication with the team, with the members, with the employee if you want to be an effective and efficient manager. And then, you are your own greatest asset, okay? You must invest in yourself. Invest time and energy in developing both your technical and managerial skill, okay? So, um, in this theory, Drucker's theory, it is a person-based approach, okay? The person is the asset not the resources. The person is the greatest resources, okay, of a company. Keep yourself mar marketable. Attend interviews regularly, and if asked to define management or the role of managers, trot out Drucker's list of management responsibilities as if they were your own. Your staff are your second greatest asset, so develop train and support them, okay? So, according to Drucker's theory, human resources is the greatest resources. Now, let me read to you a quote from Peter Drucker, okay? He said, and I quote, The aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer, so well that product or service fits him and sells itself. Now, let's go to another theory of management, theory number five. The McGregor's X and Y theory. Introduction. A manager's attitude can greatly affect the work environment for employees. This theory explains the perceptions that managers hold for their employees and the way that they generally behave. Douglas McGregor identifies two different sets of assumptions made by managers about their staff. Theory X. What does it mean? The managers who fall into Theory X category tend to believe that most employees do not like working and will avoid it as much as possible. In order for the employees to get work done, the manager feels that they need to control, threaten, punish, and force workers to do their job. They also think that most employees prefer to be directed, that they avoid responsibility at all costs and have low ambition, and they think that their employees are motivated by fear and money, okay? So, Theory X contemplates that the manager 
should force the employees, should force the member, should influence them in order to act and get the job done. So, in this illustration, um, it is a typical example of Theory X, whereby the manager controls his employees. Okay? As you can see in this um, picture. Theory Y. The manager here tends to think that employees likes to work that people enjoy working towards goals, that their commitment to goals increases based on the perceived reward for achieving them, okay? So, um, theory Y contemplates that employees are self-directing, self-sustaining. They can achieve their own goal, okay, based on the company's um, organizational culture. Most employees seek responsibility and employees' imagination, creativity, and cleverness can be used to solve problems. They also believe that in an industry, an average person's intellectual potential is only partially realized. People are employed by a variety of rewards. So this is a reward-based theory whereby um, employees, rock and file, um, the members, okay, will perform based on the incentives, based on the rewards given. So, this is a typical illustration of a theory why the employees are positive, okay, because um, the company, uh, they are free to do what they want, okay, and they are given incentives if they perform well so theory why is more of a positive um, approach compared to theory x which is more controlling and restrictive managers that have more of a theory y style tend to be more relaxed in their approach to management where employees are more free to set their objectives, they may have some more authority and they also get more flexibility. Manager might try to build an employee up so that they can feel more empowered and feel comfortable making important decisions. Okay? So, um, theory why contemplates that employees will work, okay, will perform if they are given um, freedom and incentives. So, in this illustration, we can see the contrasting difference of theory X and theory Y, okay. So, in the picture, theory X, the employee wants to go home already when he is at work. On the other hand, in theory why, the employee is excited, okay? I've got some ideas to share because um, he is free to do what, what he wants in order to achieve the goal of the company, okay? So, theory X, there is an X. Theory Y, um, the illustration why is being happy okay now let's go to another theory the theory number six covey's seven habits of highly effective people okay let me read to you a quote from stephen covey to achieve goals you've never achieved before you need to start doing things you've never done before. According to Covey, the seven habits of highly effective people are the following. First, being proactive. Then second, 
begin with the end in mind. Third, put first things first. Next, sharpen the saw. Next, think win. Another, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And then lastly, synergize. Now, let's discuss the habits individually. First, be proactive. They work and not just sit back and wait for things to happen, okay? So, if you want to be proactive, you are a person that needs initiative. You work, okay? You act. You do not procrastinate. You do not wait, okay? You do things in order to finish the task or achieve the goal next is begin with the end in mind to start with a clear understanding of one's destination okay so before you do things um, it must be clear on your mind on what the things to be done and the goals to be achieved next put first things first Effective people are not problem-minded. They are opportunity-minded, okay? So, this um, principle contemplates that as a person, you need to prioritize things, okay? Look for opportunity um, on the situation than uh, looking at it in a negative aspect. Next principle is sharpen the saw. Preserving and enhancing the greatest assets a person have reminds you to look after yourself, okay? So, in sharpening the saw, it contemplates that you need to um, invest on yourself, okay? Invest on equipment, invest on tools, okay? In order for you um, to achieve the things that are necessary for accomplishing the goals next principle is think win-win seeking a solution that allow everyone to win okay consists of integrity maturity abundance and mentality this principle contemplates um that a person should have a positive mind always okay despite the situation despite the predicament Another principle, seek first to understand than to be understood, okay? The deepest need of human soul is to be understood, okay? So, as a person, you must not insist on your um, needs or wants, okay? Seek first to understand the situation or other persons. And then lastly, Synergize. It simply means whole is greater than the sum of its part. Okay? You must work holistically. Okay? You must work together. So, how to use the principle of Kobe? To be proactive, get off your backside and work towards the achievement of your aims. Start with the end in mind by identifying your aims. Put first things first and identify which work activities move you closer to achieving your aims or goals. Sharpening the saw reminds you to look after yourself. When you deal with staff, customers, and even competitors, seek first to understand what they are saying. Once you understand their wants, you can identify a win-win solution that satisfies all parties. And then lastly, synergy improves future results beyond expectation. It values the differences. Now, let's go to another theory of management, the theory number seven. What does the theory say? Manager must get off their office and walk around the working area. Listen to staff and observe what is going on firsthand to avoid becoming isolated and losing touch with staff and the day-to-day -day operations 
of the organization. Okay? So, this theory contemplates that the manager must be hands-on. Okay? Must be um, integrative. Must be working together with the staff and the daily operations of the company. Use the walks as an opportunity to build trust and understanding with the staff. Listen to what staff have to say and take on board their work, problems, and ideas. Look for examples of good practice that can be implemented elsewhere in the organization. Look for examples of bad practice and eliminate them. Observe how other managers and supervisors interact with staff. Improve your knowledge of the business, its staff and products. Answer staff questions. And then get to know people personally and what motivates or demotivates them. Okay? So, this contemplates again that the manager should be hands-on in the organization. Okay? He must know the working conditions of the staff, the members, and how the company operates. Okay. How to use this um, principle? Identify an aim for every walk you take to find out what staff think of new working procedures and how to promote new initiatives. And then listen more than you speak and ask staff for their ideas and views on work issues. Always promise on what you can do. And then, analyze your data into three categories and use them to improve the organization's processes and practices. They are matters that require immediate action, information that will inform your future actions, factual information about the organization, and its processes that you were unaware of. Now, let's discuss another theory of management, the theory number eight. Warren Buffet on selecting the right staff, okay? Now, let me read to you a quote from Warren Buffet, considers to be the master in this. Without passion, you don't have energy. Without energy, you have Nothing. Introduction. Who is Warren Edward Buffet? He is an American business magnate, investor, and a philanthropist. The most successful investor of the 20th century. He is the chairman, CEO, and largest shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway. He was ranked as the world's wealthiest person in 2008 and as the third wealthiest in 2011, okay? He is a very successful businessman. Warren Buffet used to remind you of the key characteristics you should be looking for when you appoint or promote a staff. For example, if you have a good staff, your job as a manager becomes infinitely easier. But if you have a poor or disruptive staff, your life can be a hell. Okay? So, um, the principle of Warren Buffet contemplates that it is the staff, okay? Your employees are the ones who will make or break your company. Again, let me read to you a quote from Warren Buffet. In looking for people to hire, look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if they don't have the first, the other two will kill you. Investment strategy, according to Warren Buffet. Buy good stocks and hold them for a long time. He suggests three things you should look for when recruiting people. So, the three elements in recruitment are the following. Intelligence, integrity, which is the highest. 
And lastly is the energy. Now, let's discuss the three elements of recruitment by Warren Buffet. First is integrity. It is the most important element in completing a qualified employee. Lack of integrity leads to lack of trust. Okay? Sometimes in a company, the relationship between employees and the corporate officers or the owners are based on trust and confidence. Next is intelligence. Buffet requires employees that have the ability to strategically deal and solve problems. Okay? So, intelligent employees is very vital also in a company in order to achieve your goals. Next is energy. It's not about looking for an active and ener energetic fit employee, but a mentally energetic employee. Okay? Because um, energy motivates employees to perform better. Now, let's go to another theory of management. The theory number nine. Michael Hammer on Business Process Reengineering or BPR. Reengineering work. Don't automate, obliterate. Business Process Reengineering or BPR is an approach that seeks to redesign processes and practices in order to support the organization's mission, reduce cost, and improve efficiency. Two crucial elements for BPR, selecting the right people for the implementation team, and then overview of the process to be followed. Who is Michael Hammer? He is a professor of computer science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He wants to shift from a task focus to process focus to then removing all processes that do not create value for the customer. According to Hammer, these are the steps in the BPR process. In any BPR project, the senior manager should be able to recognize the fundamental changes on how organization works. A skilled team needs to be formed to get started with the changes and to minimize the chance of failure. It's valuable to set up a diverse team because creativity is essential in analyzing current business processes and developing new ones. Keep the size of team below 12 because more than 12 may become problematic. So, this diagram shows the process of Michael Hammer, the four stages. First is to identify a process for BPR, then review and analyze the process, and then redesign the process and plan implementation. And then lastly, test the changes, implement changes, start search for the next process, and then again, goes back to the first. Now, let's go to another theory of management, theory number 10. This is the theory of just in time. So, this is the father of Jitichi Uno. Just in time principle explained, example of JIT inventory system is a car manufacturer that operates with low inventory levels but heavily relies on its supply chain to deliver the parts it requires to build cars on a needed basis. But it will be done after the order is received. Inventory is nothing but in stocks in a warehouse. So just-in-time principle contemplates that the parts needed okay, are ordered, okay, if the need arises, then it is the time to order 
such parts. Okay? So, that is why it's called just in time because it is a um, as needed basis. Push versus pull systems explains by JIT. So, in push system inventory is push to customer which means in stock product to sale. Okay? So, the basis of the push is the customer order. In pull system inventory, um, it is pulled to through the system by the customer order. So, the reason of the um, inventory is because of the system. Because uh, the system knows that it will be ordered by the customer. So, these are the companies who utilizes the famous GIT um, system. Okay? These are the profiteers like the Dell, Toyota, Harley Davidson, and so on and so forth. What are the advantages of a GIT system? Minimizes warehouse cost. Companies also spend less money for raw materials. Production runs are short, which means the manufacturer can quickly move product from one product to another. Now, let's go to the final word on management theories. A final word on management theories. A theory doesn't have to be long and complicated to be profound. Drucker summarizes the purpose of a business and the role of managers in under 75 words. Drucker, called as the father of modern management, formulated a theory that is still used even today. Drucker placed high importance on decentralization, knowledge work, and management by objectives or MBO. According to Drucker, these are the role of the manager. The most consistent message that comes across in this section is that management theories are often contradictory. Okay? There are many management theories depending on the situation. Okay? For example, um, Drucker's theories, um, Henry Fayol's theories, sometimes they contradict each other. However, as a manager, it is incumbent upon you to learn all these theories, okay, and apply the theories, okay, in a case-to-case -case basis. For now, that ends our discussion on how to manage people. And we still have um, many more management theories to be discussed, okay, in another um, time. So, if you have any questions, if you have any clarifications, feel free to ask me or contact me or message me, okay? So, for now, that is all. Thank you and God bless us all.